Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rebalancing Time, a very <laughs> dark episode as you can see. Um, it's getting towards the last hour of daylight um, here um, on the eve of daylight savings time, <laughs> so we're going to be flipping over and getting dark even earlier. Um, but I do, you can see I have some candles lit um, on my altar today and that is because today of all days was my very first um, live shamanic event. My very first time that, um, you know, through the magic of the, of the internet, that I was able to um, channel messages like I do in the videos here, but you see them after they've already been recorded, after they've already happened. In fact, because it takes me a while to edit the subtitles, there's often quite a lag in time between when I record the video and when I upload the video um, on YouTube. So um, this, this event today took place on LinkedIn uh, and it was just an audio event. So you didn't see me uh, or see any of the participants going on. It was just, just audio. And, um, and it was fantastic. There was a small um, but wonderful group gathered and I was so, so, so grateful um, to, to everyone who showed up. Um, and especially, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, <laughs> shout out the, the one person who um, not only was up on stage and talking with me at times, but did so much to help anchor that space and to to make the event just a wonderful event that it was and that that was divine maxine um i believe she's known as wisdom mother goddess here on youtube uh, but i will tag um tag her in uh, in the show notes and if you haven't checked her out she's amazing you check her out she does amazing um videos like this and she, I've also met with her one-on-one -on -one. so worth it like it's it's really really good um so um so thank you again to Divine for um for that and um uh, I'm not going to list off all the names of the people but thank you to all who who came um so Hmm, so what wants to come through right now? Um, so you can see that I have left the five votive candles lit um, today. Uh, today there's been a lot of five energy, which um, if I had a critique, if I had a bone to pick with the creators of the tarot, Whoa, um, yeah, if, if I had a critique of the energies of the Tarot, the way that they are depicted in the Rider Waite deck, which is a really classic, very close to original um, Tarot figures, that would be the fives. Tarot, in my view, ha totally misunderstands the energy of the five and that is be that is because i don't i don't i don't fault the creators because they were probably under the same snow job snow job oh there's a there's an english phrase for you snow job means to um obscure the original story and tell a different false story instead. Um, and that is anything to do with the number five in Tarot. So five, the energy of the number five is the way that it was taught to me by the number five itself, basically. Um, the spirit of the number five. Wait, what do you mean the spirit of the number five? The number five is a concept. Like, it's not even a living being. How can it have a spirit? Yeah, it absolutely can. Um, numerology is 
um, it's, it's real folks. Um, and each one of the, the numbers in turn have taught me what their, um, what their energy is all about. And five is a number of like, boom, outward, explosive change. Outward explosive change. That's why you see a pentacle or pentagram is enclosed in a circle so that it has a container. It has a little bubble around the power of five that keeps it, um, keeps it balanced, keeps it from like completely exploding um, everywhere. But so here I'm here this is a, this little tarot test here what is the number five in the major arcana of tarot if you got it put it in the comments and I'm not going to tell you here but all I'm going to say is that that number five card has gotten completely taken over by the power of four in its rigidity, in its, I'm telling you this is what it is, in its, I'm standing up to be the the power that be to tell you to tell you the way that it is what energy of that and how the heck does that belong as a five so if you look at the minor arcana um each of the suits the five card has something to do with a struggle something to do with a loss um, you know, each one of the suits interprets it a little bit differently. Um, but their five is sort of the middle of the journey. Um, because in the Tarot, the each each of the minor arcana, if you look at the cards one through ten in any suit, they tell a story. They they follow a path and they, they go on a journey and tell you a story and each one is kind of a, you know, if you walk this path this way, you'll get to this ending. Um, so, you know, there's, um, and not all the endings are created equal. Let's just say that. So if you're the kind of person that has to um, kind of learn things the hard way, um, the two hard way um, suits are the swords and the wands, the air and the fire. They will knock you on your butt, but even between them, one of them has an outcome that's preferable to the other. Um, and then if you like them, uh, you know, it's, it's hard on the path, you know, when you're going through the journey, but you end up at a really great um, outcome that's the cups and the pentacles the water and the earth elements so just a little bit about about tarot in general um for for those who are are still learning or, or have an interest in it so anyway um today's card pull was the reversed five of cups okay and I'm going to turn it around so that you can see it a little bit easier. But you see that Roman numeral five, the V, up at the top. And then you see this cloaked figure in black um, looking down at three cups that are all spilled on the ground. Um, and if you look at them, one of them held water and two of them held a some kind of a red substance is that blood is that wine what what is that um and the figure in in the foreground that they're looking towards or they're they're facing towards 
um, there's a little river and there's a, there's a bridge in the distance and there's a castle on the other side of the river. But what the figure, because they're so sorrowful, uh, they're grieving this loss of the three cups that fell down, they don't even realize that there's two cups still upright behind them, okay? So today's reversal of the, the Five of Pentacles has to do with the fact that um, we're, we're moving past this idea of being stuck on what was lost. Let's focus on what we still have. And the way that that showed up today um, was that with the ancestors in general, um, we once we, we, we talk about losing a loved one, and of course, you know, that loved one isn't alive with us anymore. We can't give them a hug. We can't go out for ice cream. We can't enjoy the, the, the holidays and the festivities that we normally um, enjoy together. However, it does not mean that our relationship with those loved ones has to be over we can still communicate, we can still um, honor and remember um, who that person was when they were alive. And, and this is straight from um, Divine pointed out today, we can transform our relationship um, so that we're not only having this, this view of what they were like when they were alive during this particular lifetime. But once they cross over and um, become one with um, the, the oneness of all creation, they, they have this life memory, but they have it on this like grand cosmic perspective that we can get to know them on a whole new level, um, basically. So, so yeah, it, today's, today's event was all about honoring, honoring the ancestors, saying thank you, saying, you know, opening the door to doing, um, before, before we get into sessions where we're trying to repair something that went wrong or something that, that got injured or something that got broken or something that got didn't, didn't go right um, during their lifetime um, and that they've passed down their ancestral line. Before we get into any of that, um, we just want to, wanted to say hello, wanted to say that we love you, wanted to say that... Um, that we care about you. And um, in, in many cases, um, the stories of our ancestors have long been forgotten. We don't know the stories of our ancestors maybe beyond our parents or our grandparents or, you know, maybe great-grandparents great, great is mo the most that most people these days, I feel, um, know about their own family members um, and their ancestral line. And there's, there's all sorts of reasons. Um, you know, early deaths or somebody was adopted or um, there's, there's so, so many reasons why people may not know much about their ancestral line at all. Um, and I say line, but really, you know, we've got so big of a web of ancestors. If you've ever seen a family tree written out, um, you know, that, that um, ever expanding um, group of people who share our bloodline goes back, you know, to the dawn of time. Um, you know, millions, maybe not millions, uh, but thousands and thousands of generations 
of humans that brought us to who we are and where we are and coming together um, today. So, and this, this is the work that I have been called into. Um, and this is sort of feels like the birth of my work in shamanic accountancy. <laughs> um, yeah, because I am, a, I am an accountant. I have, I currently have a day job as an accountant. Um, but the accounting didn't come first. The shamanic path came first. It wasn't until, um, gosh, um, I can't remember where I was working when, but it was, it was several years after my shamanic initiation started that, um, that I started to work in the field of accounting. Um, and number one, accounting is, is one of the very few um, so-called white collar jobs that you can get into with little or no education. So, um, I've got my first accounting clerk job, um, like right around the time that I was just starting to study accounting. Um, because it was a job that, that you could get into with, with very little education. Um, and I've sort of gone up, you know, got myself more education, got myself a little bit higher on the, higher on the ladder job um, in accounting. And I've said this before, I'll say it again, I am not a CPA, okay? I'm not a certified public accountant. I, I will not do your taxes. Um, but what I am talking about doing is kind of being a shamanic um, tax man, <laughs> um, so to speak, where I'm looking to see in people in in both individual and collective, you know, family lines. Um, where do we have outstanding debts that have not been paid and have not been recognized? In the accounting world, we call that an unrecorded liability. Oh. Oh do we have unrecorded liabilities in our world? Oh, do we have people alive today who are not taking responsibility for the effects of their actions on the world around them. This is still going on in a big, big, big way. And if we are going to pull together on this planet as a human species to save our place in it, because, you know, we can, we can continue down this path of destruction, of climate destabilization, of one natural disaster after another, and you know, natural being, you know, these off the charts, off the scale, like once in a lifetime events that keep happening every year or so. Um, Will, will humanity survive that? And, you know, the answer that I'm getting is long-term no. 
if we don't make a change. The earth will still keep going on. There's going to be an awful lot of species that, that we take down with us who can't survive in the acidified, um, too, too warm of the water temperatures, um, there, you know, all of these environmental effects that we're having um, due to our choices in technology, basically. Um, that, but the world will go on. The world will shake it off and, you know, the, the niche species that are able to survive those conditions will eventually evolve into species that can be on this planet in whatever condition it'll be in, with or without humans. But I believe that if we can collectively come together and realize that we need to make big changes now, like really quickly. Um, that we can actually become a restabilizing force as a human species on this planet. Okay, like if you imagine a kid that's swinging on a swing and they're swinging really high and they don't want to be swinging that high anymore. Somebody's got to grab them and slow them down. And that takes strength. That takes some muscle. That takes some determination to follow the, tra the trajectory of the object that's swinging out of control. Grab it and use your own force to bring that to a halt or to change its trajectory. One more, one more thing I'm being told. <laughs> so I talked about the accounting piece of shamanic accountancy. Let me talk about the shamanic piece of shamanic accountancy. Um, and for a while there, I was saying that like, if I were to get a degree based on what the experiences that I had during my shamanic initiation, I would call it intergalactic shamanic accountancy <laughs> is what is what I'm, my certificate says, um, what my diploma says. Um, we'll leave the intergalactic piece of, piece of it out for, for right now. Um, but the shamanic being that um, I am able to not only communicate with, but um, make interventions in, um, some might call it the spirit world. Um, they like to, me to call it the unseen realms um, because there's, all right, well, we'll, we'll, I'm gonna, we'll get into more about, about different, different dimensions and how, how visible they are later. Um, but that I am able to take a look, for example, on somebody's ancestral lines and go back in the spirit world to find where the source of the original incident that happened. Figure out how that rolled forward. It doesn't even matter if, it, if I figure out how it rolled forward, as long as I can get back to the root of the original issue. And that's, and that's what I specialize in. Because if we can take care of the original root issue as its source, then everything else is like a row of dominoes. They just all fall into place. And um, the issues, the issue is taken care of. So, you know, and I'm sure you're wondering, like, how does that even work? If 
you know, something, this incident happened hundreds of years ago. Um, and I'm here to, to say that it works. Um, that's what shamans have done since time immemorial is worked across space and time in ways that quantum mechanics, quantum physics is only just being able to start to explain very, <laughs> the tiniest bit of, but spirit practitioners around the world in their own cultures, in their own ways, have been able to work with energies like this, um, you know, forever. That's what, that's what they do. That that's what we do. Um, because I'm now proud to, to count myself among them. Um, there was a, uh, a, a quote that I read recently. It's something along the lines of like, if society doesn't make shamans, then the universe will. <laughs> and that's, that's what happened to me. Um, I <laughs> certainly didn't have any kind of an upbringing um, in this. But um, I was, <laughs> I was called up and I, I served <laughs> um, in my own ways. And I learned um, on the job, basically. And I learned through accounting I learned how to become a better shaman because accountants move money back and forth in time and money is just a proxy for energy. Um, accountants move money back and forth in time all the time and so do shamans. So the, the two dovetail together very well, um, believe it or not. So anyway, um, and I'm being told that that's all. I'm still, um, trying to watch how long I make my videos right now due to camera um, memory storage space. Um, so I want to see if there's any last thing that wants to come through. And I'm saying no, we're, we're complete. So I wish you all a beautiful day, night, evening, whatever it is in your, um, in your part of the world right now. And um, I hope to explore this idea of group ancestral healing or individual ancestral healing um, along with you. So you can um, DM me on any social media that you might have found this on, um, or you can email me at rebalancingtime at gmail.com. Um, and... Um, reach out to me about, about an individual session because I can always um, do clearer work individually than I can in a group. You know, just because in a group we're, we're calling in so many different energies, so many different ancestors um, that I can only kind of pick at the, uh, the common denominator in, in the group. Um, but either way, um, I hope to be working um, together with you soon. All right. I love you. Oh, bye-bye.